Welcome everybody to language skills video number 32 and this is part 3 with more of confusing words. Choose the correct word. Is that a new stationary or a stationary bicycle in the gym? She doesn't just design her own stationary or a stationary she makes the paper. I received a box of stationery or stationery for my birthday. If you look at the two choices, you could find that they are almost the same in the spelling except that the last three letters. One is ending with ERY and one is ending with ARY. The one that is ending with ERY is used as a noun and it means all writing supplies, pencils, pens, papers, sharpeners, erasers, and so on. And the one that is ending with ARY is used as an adjective and it means something not movable or in a fixed place. And remember that this suffix, this ending part, ARY, I used to make um, an adjective like uh, visionary, like necessary, like uh, extraordinary. So now let's go back to the sentences and try to find the correct choice. When you choose, you need to go for the meaning and the part of speech. The first one is that a new stationary or stationary bicycle in the gym. So what do we need here is an adjective to modify the word bicycle. And this means that it's not moving. And the bicycle in the gym, of course, is not moving. So we'll have to choose the one that is ending with a or y as the suffix for ending an adjective. Number two, she doesn't just design her own stationery, she makes the paper. So which one should I take? Actually, the one that is ending with ERY. And what is the clue? First of all, we need a noun because the sentence ending here. And the second thing, we have the word she makes the paper. So the word paper here is a clue that we are talking about writing supplies. Number three, I received a box of stationery or stationery for my birthday. We need a noun. So which one is a noun? Stationery. And it's logical that you uh, receive a box of writing supplies as a gift for your birthday. The second example, choose the correct answer. When was Zora Neale Hurston born? Um, how have we born or born such disrespect? The people there have born or born many hardships. Actually, we have uh, the two words here, the same, except that one of them is ending with an E by the end. And both are verbs. The first verb, bear, which is bore and born in the past and past participle form, it means give birth. And usually it's used in the past participle form. Bear, which is B-E-A-R and B-O-R-E in the past, and then B-O-R-N-E in the past participle form, it means endure or tolerate. Now we'll go back to the examples and try to find the correct answer. So the first one would be born, B-O-R-N, uh, which means that uh, given birth. So here you're talking about the place of birth of this person. The second one, how have we born or born such disrespect? It means that we have endured, we have tolerated such disrespect. And actually the word born with uh, B-O-R-N-E, which is the past participle form of bear, it has to have an object. With bear, that means give birth, we don't have an object because it's usually used in the passive form and it doesn't have an object. So here we have born, B-O-R-N-E, it has an object here in the sentence number two, it has the word disrespect as the object. Number three, the people there have borne or borne many hardships. Do we have an object? Actually, yes, the word hardships. And what is the meaning that we need? Is it give birth or endure or tolerate? 
it means tolerate or um, endure. So we'll have to check with born, B-O-R-N-E. Next example, we have five sentences, and all of them you need to choose between break, B-R-A-K-E, and break, B-R-E-A-K. Number one, remember to break or break cautiously on white throats to avoid car accidents. Number two, try not to break or break any dishes as you clear the table tonight. Three, the doctor says that the x-ray shows a break or break in your left arm. Number four, the report concluded that a defective brake or brake caused the accident. He couldn't stop the car. If you brake or brake a window, you will pay for it. So we have two words. We have brake, B-R-A-K-E, which is used as a noun or a verb. And as a noun, it means the device in the car or on the bus that uh, causes the slowing down of the movement. And when you use it as a verb, it means to slow down the movement. And then we have the word break, B-R-E-A-K, which is used as a noun. It means fracture or fragment. And it could be used to mean interval or rest. Like when you say we have a break uh, between uh, sessions at a school. And then break used as a verb to mean cause a fracture or cause a fragment. So let's go back to the uh, sentences to select the right choice. Okay, the first one, remember to break or break cautiously on wet roads to avoid car accidents. So the meaning that you need here is a verb and it means to slow down the movement of the car. So it's break, B-R-A-K-E. The second one, try not to break any dishes as you clear the table tonight. Here it means that um, uh, it's a verb also, and it means to cause a fragment, to cause a fracture. Number three, the doctor says that the x-ray shows a break or break in your left arm. Here you need a noun, and it means a fracture, a part that has been uh, separated into parts. Number four, the report concluded that a defective brake or brake caused the accident. He couldn't stop the car. The clue here is the second half of the sentence, he couldn't stop the car, because the tool that is supposed to be used to stop the car didn't work. So we'll have to go for brake, B-R-A-K-E. Number five, if you brake or brake a window, you will pay for it. Of course, you will have to go for a break, B-R-E-A-K, which is here used as a verb, and it means to cause a fragment or a fracture. Next, we have the difference between the word capital and capital. Washington, D.C. has been the capital or the capital of the United States since 1791. Number two. On our visit to Washington, D.C., we toured the national capital or capital. Number three, do you think they have enough capital or capital to start their business? Number four, in all countries, first-degree murder is a capital or a capital offense. Number five, the government has assigned a big budget for the renovations in the capital or capital building. Number six, it has been a capital or a capital idea, improving work quality. Proofread your work to be sure that every sentence begins with a capital or a capital letter. So what is the difference between capital and capital? The word capital that ends with A-L is used as a noun or an adjective. If it's used as a noun, it means the most important city in a country. Actually, it's the focus or the center of the country. So we can say Paris is the capital of France. Uh, Washington is the capital of the United States. And capital also is used as a noun to mean a large amount of money for investment. So if you wanted to start your business and you need money, this large amount of money to start the business is called a capital. And capital is used as an adjective to mean great, important, or when you talk about letters, it means the uppercase. 
While the word capital, C-A-P-I-T-O-L, it's used only as a noun, and it means the building where the government of a country has its meetings. So let's go back to the uh, examples and check the answers. Number one, we would go for the capital, which means here the most important city in a country, the center of the country. Number two, we would go for a capital, and it's capitalized here, the national capital, which is uh, a proper noun here, and it refers to a specific building. Number three, do you think they have enough capital? Which here means um, the large amount of money used for investment. Number four, we need an adjective actually to mean a great, a big, um, an essential, a basic. So uh, you need an adjective here. We would go for a capital. Number five, the government has assigned a big budget for the renovations in the capital building. You're talking about the building here. Number six, it has been a capital idea, capital idea, and it means great, effective. So it's used here as an adjective. Number seven, proofread your work to be sure that every sentence begins with a capital letter and the meaning here is uppercase letters. Next, we have those examples. They will alter or alter the building to suit tenants. The priest was standing beside the altar or altar. If we are late, we'll need to alter or alter our plans. The word altar with an A by the end, an A-R, so it's a noun, and it means a stand at a church where religious rites are performed. An altar with an E-R by the end, it's a verb, and it means modify or change. So in the first example, we need a verb. We have the word will, which is used as an auxiliary. So we need the main verb. So we'll use alter, A-L-T-E-R. And number two, we need a noun. We have the word the, which is an article, and it needs to be followed by a noun here. So we'll go for alter, which is the stand that is in the church. Number three, if we are late, we'll need to alter because we also need a verb here after two. So we need a verb. We need to modify our plans. We need to change our plans. So we need the verb alter, A-L-T-E-R. The next three words are really tricky and they can be confusing to many of us. Assure, ensure, and ensure. The three of them are verbs and if you cross out the E by the end and add A and C E, it would be a noun. So let's try to fill in the gap with the suitable verb. The first one, did she, you that the problem would be resolved by tomorrow? Number two, doesn't the first amendment, you as citizens, the freedom of speech? Number three, for how much did you, the jewels, sir? As for the words meanings, we have the word assure that it starts with an A. It's a verb and it, may, it means to make certain by removing doubt or suspense, to promise, to give you a promise. The word ensure that it starts with an E, it's a verb also and it means to make certain by protecting, by guarantee. Ensure with an I. It's a verb and it means to arrange for money compensation in case of loss or accident or death. So it's always about the meaning. The first one, did she assure you that the problem would be resolved by tomorrow? You can replace the word assure here by promise. The second one, doesn't the First Amendment ensure you as citizens the freedom of speech? You can replace the word ensure here with the word guarantee or protect their freedom of speech. Number three, uh, for how much did you ensure the jewels, sir? It means how much did you arrange for the money compensation in case of lo losing those jewels?
I'm sure that for the next examples, the majority of you know how to differentiate between the two choices, but just to refresh all our minds about those words. Number one, the store sales personal or personnel have been very helpful every time I have shopped here. Number two, I don't think we should get into this personal or personnel conversation. We need to leave them alone. Number three, the difference between the word plain and plain. Do these printed instructions seem plain or plain to you? And number four, my plane or plane leaves at 8 p.m. For the first and second examples, when we say personnel, P-E-R-S-O-N-N-E-L, it means the group of people that are working together in the same place. That's why we chose this word in the first example. The store sales personnel or personnel have been very helpful every time I've shopped here. So we need a noun, this is number one, and we need a meaning that is a group of people working in the same place. But when it comes to an adjective, we go for personnel. How do we know that we need an adjective in the second example? I don't think we should get into this personal conversation. So you're modifying the word conversation here with an adjective. And then uh, the clue is we need to leave them alone. So the meaning that we need here is private. For examples three and four, do these printed instructions seem plain, P-L-A-I-N, to you? And we need an adjective here to mean simple or not complicated. Number four, my plane or plane leaves at eight o'clock and I'm sure that all of you know here that the meaning is the aircraft. Examples five and six are based on the difference between piece and piece, P-E-A-C-E and P-I-E-C-E. And examples seven and eight is based on the difference between whose and whose. So let's read, three nations signed a peace or a peace treaty to end the long-standing conflict. Number six, the jigsaw puzzle lacks one piece or a piece. For seven and eight, who's or who's the captain of the team? And number eight, no one could remember whose or whose name had been drawn first. Number five, the meaning that we need is a noun, and it means the opposite of war. So we'd go for peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. But number six, we need a meaning, a noun also, but it means a part, a small part of something. So we'll go for peace, P-I-E-C-E. -E. Number seven, what we need is who is. That's why we'll use this um, form which is who apostrophe s so who is the captain of the team but number eight we need actually a pronoun that means belonging to so if I say no one could remember whose name had been drawn first it means no one could remember the name of whom had been drawn first Number nine and 10 are based on the difference between minor and minor. So we have the word minor, M-I-N-O-R, and minor, M-I-N-E-R. Number nine, he's a minor or minor, his work at the mines is really hard. Number 10, he's a minor or minor, he cannot vote in the coming elections. For number nine, we'll go for minor, M-I-N-E-R, because it means a person who works at the mines. And the mines, these are the places digged under the surface of the earth to get minerals and coal. Number 10 will go for minor, M-I-N-O-R. This is a noun to mean a person who is under the age of legal responsibility. How did we know this? Because he cannot vote in the coming elections. Be careful about how to use its and its, because in the standard writing, uh, one cannot be accepted in the place of the other. The community is proud of its or its school system. Number 12, it's or it's been a long time since your last visit. 
Number 13, it's or it's a symbol of peace. Number 14, the compressor has been delivered, but it's or it's installation has been delayed. So what do we need in each sentence? In number 11, we need a possessive pronoun. So we'll go for it's as one word with no apostrophe. So the community is proud of its school system, which means the community is proud of the school system of the community. We need a possessive pronoun. When it comes to it has or it is, we go for it apostrophe s. So we say it's been a long time since your last visit. This means it has been. And then 13, it's a symbol of peace. It is a symbol of peace. Actually, you need a subject and a verb here. Number 14, the compressor has been delivered, but its or its installation has been delayed. Actually, we'll go for the possessive pronoun also, which is one word with no apostrophe. So the compressor has been delivered, but its installation has been delayed, meaning, but the installation of the compressor has been delayed. The last two examples, last season, Albert lead or led the team to a championship. Number 16, the alchemist truly believed that he would one day transform lead or lead into gold. For example, 15, we need a verb. We have Albert as the subject and we need a verb. And this verb would be in the past. How did we know? Because we have the word last season at the beginning. So we say last season, Albert led the team to a championship. In number 16, actually, we need a noun. And this noun, it's a, a name of a metal, the metal that is used in pencils. And actually, although it has the same spelling as the verb lead, but it's pronounced as the past form of lead, it's pronounced led. So number 16, we'll go for led, L-E-A-D, which is a noun here, and it's a name of a metal. As we said, this is the metal used in pencils. It would be so helpful to you to always remind yourself of the differences between those uh, confusing words because it would help you in reading comprehension questions and vocabulary questions. Waiting for your questions and feedback on English for Fun English Skills at gmail.com until we have another video of language skills. Best of luck.